Basically, I was trying to figure out, I wanted to write a science fiction film. And at that same time, Ari was graduating from getting his PhD from NYU in neuroscience. And so, but he didn't really want to study academia anymore. So we started talking about, you know, maybe we'd write something together. And we basically spent lots of time walking around Manhattan, talking and thinking about ideas. The thing started is just Darren and me sh talking. We we're just talking, and the idea started to roll. And so then we talked some more, and then slowly we get enough material together that Darren has this process which he cards things out, which is an organizational system. We would sort of do that together. When he was all set, and he had enough, he'd go off and write it. He'd disappear and go off and write it. I would say that The Fountain is the kind of the movie that when Darren and I started to make films 10, 15 years ago, that this is a movie we've been working on making the whole time. And that the other movies we've made were kind of a stepping stones to get us here. One of the ideas, how I write basically is I take a lot of different ideas from a lot of different places that I think are cool and sort of try to mesh them together. And one of the things I was into was sort of Mayan culture and conquistadors and that whole time period. And that led us down to a research trip down to Guatemala and Honduras and Mexico. Yeah, those are the eyes and the nose. It's a big mouth. It's the face of a creature. Maybe use the mouth of a, um, of a snake or a jaguar as the entrance to the cave. So what do you guys uh, think about our trip so far? I'm tired. Day one, I'm tired. Sorry. Are you sick of ruins yet? No. Can you see more? Yes. Right. Where are we? Copan. In the museum. Sculpture museum. Yeah? yeah? You see anything interesting? There's this big red thing up there. We sort of got filled with the themes for our movie. Slowly but surely the film started to come together and we were looking for places to shoot and Warner Brothers really wanted us to go to Australia. Australia was great. The Gold Coast was kind of a wasteland. It was kind of like Fort Lauderdale. And uh, we got a nice house, at least, and uh, we just started. It was kind of crazy to move all the way around the world to make a movie. It was just, it's an absurd thing to do. 
Yeah. It's pretty close. I'm pretty sure we so we can maybe have some guys run yeah. right in there. That'll be cool. Jump down. No, no. Just there's going to be a bit of bush yeah. and some awesome more dudes up, up there. there. It's a good, it's a good vantage point for these guys. Uh, I don't know. We, I think we actually want to see a future. The, pro the problem is we're trying to do something that's unrealistic. One thing, real quick. To make things a little clearer, one one shorthand that we use for the different time periods to make it clearer is the past is number one, the present is number two, and the future is number three. Tomas comes up this side of the McJagger platform, and he's like looking back. The pop is screaming at him. He comes around, uh, walks out onto it. Right. You agree with me on the tree being too big? You do. Yeah. Oh. Uh, no, well, you know, I think we know you said it. It does look pretty big in the It just doesn't quite fit. That's right. I was like, you mean in seven weeks there's going to be 200 Mayans and like 800 extras storming a 90 foot pyramid in the jungle out there wearing. I mean, how's that? What? I had no idea how we're going to get from where we were to there. Oh, whoa, we. Fucking A. Gonna go up there? The Australian crew was fantastic and they did incredible work. And it would have been a great, great, great movie um, had it happened. The whole Australian adventure, the first two and a half years of our adventure on the fountain, was very, very intense. After much wrestling with a lot of different things in LA and probably you know, the worst week professionally and personally in my life, we've, um, I, the studio is shutting us down. But they are in a place where they want to at least store everything and hopefully put this back together. They've been very, very supportive and they're looking for us to find the right actor for it. Does anybody need a hug? <laughs> <laughs>
we got closer and closer to the light um, until the final scene, obviously, where he breaks through and it's pure light. Mm. Quiet, please. Roll up. We're rolling. On speed. And Ish, you sure that's uh, you sure that glass is safe? You sure you're not going to go through it? You sure it's safe? You sure, all in? You sure? You sure? You sure we didn't switch it on? And action! That's a Creo. Ah! Oh shit! Get him off him! Let go! Get him out of here! Wait. Okay, nurses. Out. One, two, go. Get him out of here. Go, guys. Okay, thank God. Yeah. Very nice. Cut. Very nice. Very good. Focus. <laughs> the hospital, for example, um, that was that was a very clean representation of the idea of him moving down a long passage in the dark to um, to the light at the end of the tunnel which um, Izzy's room, you know, when he throws the doctor up against the blinds and the blinds crash, the light penetrates the space for the first time. But his journey from the elevator to her room, you know, is, is essentially um, the journey of the ship from Earth to the star. There, yeah. Right, let's start right here. Alrighty. Roll it up. yourself, Francois. Yep, that's right. Rolling. Speed. Ah. Yeah. One, two, three, action. That's a good one. Yeah. And cut. Cut. That worked. Johnny. Give me another. That worked. That nailed it. Uh, here, you just slow down a tiny, tiny bit. No problem. It's hard. It's in my bones, my blood. Huh? Nine o'clock is the call general. The cast will be ready at 10 o'clock. And in and around 10 o'clock, we want to hit the ground running. The goal is tomorrow to get all the wide shots done by lunch. There are a lot of shots, okay? There are many shots and we can do it. And this is the only way through this maze. And we will have a plan once Kimmy gets this done, okay? Three, two, one, action! What the fuck is a pigeon doing in the frame? Get the pigeon! Get the fuck out of the shot, pigeon! Hello. Here, here's your shot. Come here. Starting close here. You pull out. This is insane, huh? crazy how much time you spend thinking about something like this and then it's done. I've been thinking about this freaking museum since fucking June. Um, 
When are we going to do the crane shot? Okay. Yes, there's a lot of shots to do. Oh yeah, there's a lot of shots to do. So I'm wondering if we need them all. Oh yeah, absolutely. I can't cut the sequence together without. Idea. I like that. Let's do that one more time. Right. From over there. Yeah. That was nice. But Ray, yeah. when you see him, just bring him over. Okay, I'm and as he's right. coming here, go back. And as he's getting closer, use that. That was a really nice thing to do. <laughs> Great catch! Oh, what is the word for today? Bombastic. that paintball mask? We're good. This is good to go, go. If they're oh, good to go, go. We just have to warm up the machine. Make you want sure. To show us an example of what it looks like. Let's warm them up. Go ahead, Let's tough. show Darren what this is gonna look like. take too much of your time. I'd like to uh, welcome you all. First of all, thank you very much for a job well done on the outside. Uh, it was hard conditions yesterday and uh, we all persevered and we got just about everything, so thank you very much. What I realize is that we wrapped the present. The present, the present is done. Okay. It's pretty cool. We're one we third of the way it's done. We are in the 16th century, so congratulations to everybody. So what, so right. I, what I want you to do is come here. And walk in front, walk right in front of it, right in under it. Okay, so it's gonna go all the way. And I was thinking of the lantern. Okay, at this point, it's gonna come down, and that's when you'll get your distance. And you'll hear, you'll hear it coming down. You'll hear it as it's coming down. And then I start to get some distance. Yeah, you could get a little bit, just speed up a little bit to get in front of the camera. In a very simple way, all the sets are designed around the idea of a journey. So they're set up in a linear form. So, you know, um, you could say the same for Seville, starting at the door, moving through the space to the queen's cage, where the light was generated.
And cut. You got the end king too, so. Let's go back. Takes you, you drive through the night, back to Seville, not to dawn. You get here at night. Isn't that shot of me riding? That's going to Celestio. Okay. And now you're here, it's night yep. time, and it's in the middle of the night, it's about four or five hours. She's having a court with you. Okay. 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 The glass is to put, we're going to put the dagger on the glass and see if the distance between the light and the dagger is sufficient to project a shadow on the map such that the, the holes in the dagger line up exactly with the, um, the pyramid. And then once the, once the holes on the pyramid line up exactly, there's a central hole that's projected, which shows the... X marks the spot. X marks the spot. They say, whoever drinks of its sap and swallows <laughs> will live forever. <laughs> I tried it on three Canadian girls at work. <laughs> Most cultures have an immortality myth, because no one wants to die, so they make up myths of how you can live forever. And in almost all those cultures, the immortality is tied to plants and to a lesser degree water. So there's the fountain of youth and the tree of life. Bon, allumé, bouge pas. 931. Ok, c'est pas la bonne. The marking on the hilt. Do you see it? It is a map. A map to the Mayan's greatest secret. Cut. We're going to do one more for safety. Cut. Once again. Good to be. Good to be. Take it back. Hold it by the... Take it back from the... Before you go down, take it by the dagger, so by the blade. The, 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 the hilt on it first, because you went to the other one. Once again, please. Atmosphere is, I think, it's the most important part of cinematography and lighting, is creating the atmosphere for the film, whatever the film may be, whether it be a comedy, drama, or thriller or whatever genre or non-genre it may be, it's, it's all about atmosphere. Yeah, the crucifix should be centered, no? The cross. Oh, no, 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 you mean the actual cross? I don't know about up, up, down. I don't care. Step into the room for a second. Wait, wait, wait. up before they kick me out of the ASC.
She has, you know, she has forbidden it. Yes. She has forbidden it. That's right. She has forbidden it. That's right. Here we go. Stand Strong. by. God damn it, you piece of shit. She's forbidden it. Please, Captain, there is no honor in suicide. They will Roll kill you, and Spain will lose her protector. And Spain will lose her protector. They will kill you, and Spain will lose her protector. That's Anne. That's Anne. Shh. Quiet, please. Anne. You must be cut out. There is no other choice. This is our only hope. <laughs> Fucking Batman. Hey, cut. <laughs> Who said I wasn't going to shoot Batman? Sorry. Is he going to be a little <coughs> sweaty over there? No. Be, I think he should be sweaty. Yeah, I think should, we should slip him down. I think it should be a, a serious workout. If it's a problem, I'll call cut and stop you from uh, doing it. <laughs> Darren, yeah. I don't want this rope to hide this. I'm sure you Absolutely. want to see this, right? Yep. But then there is going to be blood on this that's going to come on here. I just want to let you know. Where's the blood coming from? Well, there's a tube under here, and it's going to... That's okay. Okay. I'm going to collect that. The heretics have confessed. A little to your left, Stephen. And ceded their lands to your holy office. They await your judgment. A little bit to the left, and then bring this in about six inches. This is a good start. So can you answer that question for me? How much time until the monks are ready? Okay, I'll tell you your road. Okay, I'll tell you a number and a letter. Okay, I'll give you a number, a letter. Okay, I'll give you a number, a letter. Okay, I'll give you a Eyes open and close and open and close. Just the pain, oh, you know, okay? All right, good. Once we establish what, um, what lens we're gonna use for a wide shot, we use that lens. And, you know, the, the concept of symmetry, for example, with Darren, I know that there's gonna be a symmetrical frame. Even if I don't know exactly what the shot is, if I walk into a space and I find the symmetry, chances are a camera's gonna go there, you know? And I'm lighting for symmetry. You know, with that information, I'm lighting a frame whether it's a frame set by James's set or a frame set by my camera, um, we're lighting 
a frame based on a concept. I fear not. She will not be in hell alone. I will make sure her servants are waiting for her. This is only a movie. Again, more torture on Aronofsky's Guys picture. Looking. It's just like a regular Saturday night. What can I say? Oops. It's so cold that when you breathe in deep, it hurts your lungs. <coughs> subject to notification all right we're here for 11 days at the stands at this hour i just gotta i yeah i gotta go to makeup right now and check up on the actors real quick i mean that, that to me is fucking badass i think you should go with it oh you guys no, you, you know you traveled for two months across the water haven't showered for months so you can only imagine what the smells are <laughs> what you're gonna have is like the clothing, and then when you're gonna hit like this, the shoulder will collapse, like this one, and then the spread of blood will go out. So it's just for the impact. Like... Well, the shoulder splits like that. Yeah. The shoulder splits like that, and then it's gonna be a spurt of blood. Yeah, but you're not succeeding. Oh God, it's what's his name, the paparazzi.
<laughs> Whoa! It's cool! <laughs> If you read a script that Darren writes, it's not something you get on your desk at, you know, with an ICM cover or a William Morris cover. Or you, you know, you read it from beginning to end and it's not complete. Like what I do doesn't exist without, uh, you know, the emotional intensity that it puts in his films. So after four years, we finally wrote a film on the Mayan ball court. A5 Apple Echo, take two A marker. Six. This cannot go on the DVD actually. I looked at the budgets of other films. It was just, it was just crazy. Get out of here. Let's talk about the chapel or the uh, pyramid shrine. It's a very small space as you've all been inside to see. So we have to really keep it controlled. One of the things that are happening in the scene is fire. It's, it, it's basically pop us with a flaming sword. The flaming sword is comprised of rubber cement. It is ignited by a small electric match as part of the action. We've rehearsed it. Fernando has rehearsed it. He's aware of what's going on. Shivalva! Point number two. This is a hot set today. We are dressing this set on the uh, on this uh, shrine. It bleeds. It seeps blood. Well, and now you show up. Now we've had all the fun. It was originally conceived almost as a birth canal. So, um, you know, he sort of spit out of this slimy, um, gooey passage into the light. Go ahead. Action! Coglia sbatta vocol, li va yuk me il totiletta sto colar cele l'alte, ciò c'è siutta schlot sciela le. Li la che le rihais velar sacchi la lo si le, sieva il va! No! Check the gate. And cut, print, check the gate. And then that's good. Very good. Very good. That was right. Yeah. Someone probably pulled the ladder.
And then you move in and it's just a bloody mess, basically, inside. Keep it on. Right. We'll figure it out tomorrow. I need Dan Shrek to figure it out. Yeah. Who's that guy? Who's that guy talking to me? <laughs> <laughs> I'm cracking me. There's too much to do, man. Not enough to do. sees the capillary and in a single motion he sticks it into the tree right puts a needle in and just pushes in slightly birds of paradise nesting in the branches noisily flap away such droplet of thick white sap slows floats down the blade drips Tomas watches closely as it falls from the hill The stuff that we put into uh, it's the the sap from the tree. Oh wow, that's the the goo. <laughs> creamy frosting. There you go. That's not creamy frosting. Is the sap of life. As you're going up the uh, tree here, yeah. it's just make that more of a pleasurable moment. At the beginning, when you first go, no, when you after you drink the mouthful. Yeah. You go. I think every at the, other at the beginning. Got. At the beginning, I'm sort of doing a bit of a my body's freaking out. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and then there's maybe even <gasps> the first one. Try that. Try, okay. try. You drink it, and then go straight up to <gasps> amazement. Yeah. And stay there, and maybe come back on that breath. But just the immediate okay. look up. Try that. Yeah. <sighs> Flower sequence again, you know. Uh, Darren really didn't want to use CG, so we're looking for other practical solutions and ways to create that effect of of Tom <clears throat> create that effect of Tomas uh, 
drinking from the tree of life and turning and his body turning into flowers. We explored a different number of possibilities. One thing that was really interesting was that James Chinlin, the designer, had on a previous show had created these bladders of flowers. We took that idea, collaborated with Maestro FX, and was able to create these bodies that would burst out with with greens in, in different patterns and everything. Um, but the thing that we couldn't really get was the, a flower opening up on the body. So one thing we did was explore time-lapse photography. And what proved to be difficult and pretty much impossible was to take those flowers and track them on to the body at different angles. So this was a place where Darren relented to the use of CG because it just gave us a lot more flexibility. Another copy visit and gets hooked on to the rig for the for the for the spindle.